Hey everyone, welcome back to the Library of Parthos. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the book Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. So as I said in my November TBR video, I have no idea what to read for the month of November. Um, I mean there, as far as I know, there really aren't any like Thanksgiving themed books. Um, I'm not always quite ready for Christmas. This year I was ready earlier than I usually am. Um, but like after October, I don't know what to do. Um, so my TBR, if you haven't watched that, I can link the video, um, was kind of a random mix of some, still some spooky kind of books from Halloween. Um, I always kind of enjoy reading like mafia related stories. Yeah, I just, I just don't know. I just don't know what to read. Um, so part of that was, um, finishing some spooky books from my TBR, which was only a monster. Um, so I'll start with just a quick summary, try to keep it as spoiler free as possible, and then I'll get into my thoughts on the book. So um, if you are planning on reading this or you've already started and you don't want me to ruin the end for you, um, feel free to skip the spoilers to the end of the video. All right, so the main character of our story, her name is Joan. She is currently um, living with her grandmother, aunt, uncle, cousins, as she is spending the summer with them away from her dad. Her dad is uh, currently traveling somewhere, in, I believe it was Malaysia. Um, her mother has passed away, and so she is um, right off the bat kind of starts with these cultural differences between her grandmother's side of the family and her father's side of the family. While she's staying with her grandmother, she ends up working at a museum and um, becomes very interested in one of her fellow volunteers named Nick as they are about to go on their first date um, some horrible things happen and Joan who has been told her entire life that she's a monster by her family um, finds out that she actually is a monster and the rest of her family are monsters as well and there's this whole community of monsters. Nick is the hero who is determined to wipe all of the monsters off of the face of the earth. So it's a struggle for Joan to balance the fact that um, this boy Nick she had this instant connection with however he now wants to destroy her family and everyone that she has ever loved. And so that is the main conflict. All right, so getting into some of my thoughts on the book, I like I enjoyed reading it. Definitely not one that I'm going to reread. First of all, <laughs> Joan is called a monster by her family her entire life, and they never explain it to her. So like, I don't know. <laughs> if I were a kid and my family were calling me a monster, I don't know that I'd continue staying with them. Um, so that was kind of weird. So Joan has these monster powers. However, no one in her family has ever told her about them, how to use them, how to control them, what they do. Like she's just completely in the dark about this. So the way that these monster powers work, um, so each family has their own specific ability. Um, however, all monsters can travel through time by taking time away from other humans. So, um, if they want to travel a, uh, I think it's a, if they want to travel a year, they need to take a day off of a person, which means that they will then die one day sooner than they were intended to. Um, and the way that they do this is by touching the back of their neck. So kind of, I mean, it was an interesting concept, but I was also kind of weird that like everyone was like protecting their necks throughout the whole thing. Like it's very like Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> keep your hand at the level of your eye sort of thing. Um, so it was just, it was a, it was a weird concept. There were parts of it that I was intrigued by, parts that I was just not as intrigued by. Um, so Joan's entire family is killed by Nick when he reveals himself to be the monster hunter and she has to team up with somebody from another monster family. The other monster family that Joan is introduced to and when she ends up teaming up with Aaron Oliver, one of the members of the family, they, they very much remind me of the Malfoys. Like they're very um, entitled, they're very wealthy. Um, Joan technically is half monster, so of course they're like, mm, we don't want anything to do with you. Um, you're a monstrosity. In addition to being a monster, we just think you're worse than everybody else. Um, but 
most of the Olivers are killed in this encounter with Nick as well. So she needs to team up with Aaron Oliver to, first of all, to escape and then to figure out what they're going to do about Nick. So as they're trying to figure all this out, Joan is kind of left with this moral dilemma of she needs to get away and she needs to get out of this time period that she's in because it's very dangerous for her to be there where Nick can find her, but that also means she needs to take time from a human, which is essentially taking time off of their life. So she battles with this throughout the entire book, this idea that she's taking life away from another person for her own benefit. Um, but she ends up doing it because they do need to get away from Nick. So as they are traveling, she's introduced to this whole like monster culture. Um, this was a part that was weird for me. Like I thought the idea of a monster culture was super cool. They have their own currency, their own post office where they can send letters to different time periods. Um, but it wasn't really like highlighted all that much. There were weird parts that were highlighted. For example, um, Joan goes to a, like they go to a tavern when they first arrive in the 90s, which is where they decide to hide from Nick. She goes into this tavern and ends up eating like butter bread and was like, oh wow, this tastes exactly like the butter bread that Gran used to make. And they're like, oh yeah, it's a monster thing. It's a monster recipe. So like it was mostly used to describe the food that she would be, they'd be like, oh yeah, that's a monster cultural item. Um, however, there were like all these other things that were happening that weren't kind of highlighted. Like the, they had their own little market where you could buy like clothes from different time periods. They like, there were all these other things that could have been like highlighted as part of the monster culture. And it was really just kind of like the food, like the butter bread and the stew. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of weird. Um, but I thought the idea of a culture was really cool. So throughout the book they're interacting with all of these different families who, these monster families, who also can travel through time however they each family has their own ability. So Joan's family, the Hunts, they can like store things in pockets of time so like um, I think there's like she's she said she now thinking back and understanding that she's been around these things her entire life and never knew it she remembers like her family just like reaching into thin air and like pulling out a bag of chips or something so like they can store things in like little pockets of space um there's another family that has like the records for all of the monsters and so they keep track of the timeline like every family is just a little bit different um in what their particular abilities are so they end up discovering that somehow their timeline has been changed. Um, there was a timeline where none of these things happened. Joan's family was alive and well. However, somebody had been interfering and turned Nick into the hero. He wasn't like originally supposed to be the hero. Basically, somebody kept killing his family before his eyes to make him hate monsters so much. I, like they were repeatedly doing it. They'd like kill them and then like reverse time so they were alive again and then killed them again and because they were trying to create the hero from all of these monster legends. However, there was one flaw and that flaw they discover is that the hero and a monster have this um, really strong bond relationship throughout all of the story, throughout one version of the story in particular, I believe. Um, and so it is said that like they kind of like can't stay away from each other. So Joan realizes that she is the monster in this legend. She's the one that Nick has this like crazy attraction to and um, that that is she that means that she has to step in and try to save her family. So she ends up confronting him and she has this new hidden power that she um, nobody told her about. Gran I think mentioned like you'll come into this power that's not like our family power it's like a separate power um so she does have this power to kind of erase the timeline and create a new one and so at the end of the story she is able to um just kind of start over so so nick's not the hero anymore they've never met um her family's alive and well everything kind of goes back to the way it was and um, she hopes that they will meet. I think she does end up seeing him in the last few pages of the book and is hoping that now they can meet and have 
you know, that relationship that they would not have been able to have in the previous timeline. In terms of like romance for this book, obviously Joan and Nick have this romance that starts off at the beginning because they're just going on this first date. They end up kissing like right before the, the Olivers come in and before Nick massacres everybody. Um, but she does kind of develop a bond with Aaron Oliver as she's working with him. And right before she goes to confront Nick, he ends up saying like, you know, when this, if you end up fixing the timeline and everything goes back to the way it was, we're not going to be friends anymore because my family is going to hate you because you're a half blood, I like whatever, half monster, half human. Um, we're not going to get along. So do not find me like this is this is where it ends for us. Um, and so that's kind of it. And then she ends up erasing Nick too. So it's almost like a I don't even know if I would say it's a love triangle, but it's like a love triangle. It starts out as a love triangle and just like is non-existent at the end. Um, so that was kind of disappointing. I mean, I wanted, you know, I want people to end up happy at the end of the book. And I mean, I guess they were because they got their families back and everything, but I don't know. It just kind of left hanging there with that romance. And um, I've read a few books lately where I've been like, okay with that. And this one, I really wasn't like <laughs> I wanted them to end up together at the end um, but I am glad that Joan got her family back because of course that was very tragic that they were all massacred and now she's understands that she's a monster she can make her own decision about using these powers that she has so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon bye